so the football season is officially over now the Euro Championships are over. Just watched England lose to Spain. Congratulations, Spain. They deserve the tournament, in my opinion. I mean, you might be watching this video, I don't know, in, in 2050. So none of this makes sense. So yeah, my point being is, the F1 season is still going, so let's play some F1 on the Game Boy Advance. So, I haven't played this game before. F1 2002. Not to be confused with Formula 1 2002, a separate game. I think that was on the PlayStation or the PS2. I've played that game, but I've never played this game. This is EA. It's got EA's stamp of approval. Or, or just EA stamp, because I don't think they approve their own games the day I don't know. Here are your tracks, guys. <laughs> so, the Game Boy Advance version of this, it's difficult to find reviews. Um, but reviews for the other systems, because I think you could play this on GameCube. I did read earlier, guys. I read the wiki. Uh, the GameCube, I think PS2, I think this was on PC. It was on something else as well. Anyway, home console versions were supposed to be very, very good. But nothing is said about Game Boy Advance, and that's why I want to feature it, because I'm intrigued, because it's the Game Boy Advance. Um... <laughs> And F1 on the tiny little Game Boy Advance. Let, let's see how it plays. Um, so, let's set the downforce here to high. I've got a feeling that this is going to be a little bit tricky to play. Let's have a look. Oh, sound effects are good. The Game Boy Advance was a beast of a console, wasn't it? I like the sprites. The cars look really cool. Okay. Oh! It's twitchy as hell. Hey! I gotta respect this D-pad. Look at all the cars flying off! Respect the D-pad. I, I need that printed on a t-shirt, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, as I am recording this, we're in... Where are we? July of 2024, just in case you're wondering. Just in case you didn't know. And Hungary, or the Hungarian Formula One Grand Prix is this coming weekend, and I'm excited for it. So I like to feature F1 games on the channel when there's some, some Grand Prix action, some F1 events on the horizon. I'm actually enjoying the F1 a lot more than the Euros. I, I thought that you... I know I keep talking about footy, but we do get a lot of footy... Fans coming to this channel. I thought it was boring. A boring tournament. And I'm not just saying that because England lost the final. England were dreadful to watch. But I said that since the first game. Um, but the F1. It's really got interesting lately, hasn't it? With Max Verstappen not getting it all his own way. The McLaren cars being fast. Mercedes now are quick again. They've got a great car now. With their upgrades and what have you. But how's this gameplay, Mike? You've just talked about football and real-life F1. Look at the buildings in the background. It's okay. It's... It's difficult to control as I did predict. It's... Look at this. And I've got downforce on high. I think there's an art to cornering. I, I think you've got to do it in increments, which is quite weird. And to explain what I mean, you basically need to... Uh, you need to press the D-pad once to go left or right. And then as you're cornering, press it once more. Uh, I'm, I'm not explaining it well. It's, yeah, it's very tricky to play, this is. I would have loved this back in the day, though. It's not a bad video game. Far from it. It's just mm, twitchy. But it's well done. Or it's done well. <laughs> for a portable, for a handheld... Uh, F1 game. So that warns me. I thought it was my engines getting too hot, but I think that's just warning me of the corners, the turns, the uh, red flashing exclamation mark. This is decent. I mean, this is supposed to be Australia, but it, it doesn't feel like 
the Australian Grand Prix, I must say. I think I chose Australia anyway. I was too busy talking about the European football championships. I won't reference any more soccers, I promise. Let's have a look at... What should we look at? Yeah, it was. It was Melbourne, wasn't it? Um, let's try Imola or Imola. I always call it Imola. It's not Imola. It's Imola, isn't it? In Italy. I really enjoy this track. Mm, I don't think this looks... Like Emily, I mean, there's limitations. Of course, it's the Game Boy Advance. I like all the the countryside, the Italian countryside there in the background. It's a pretty game. I think this looks nice, but it it just feels a little bit like your generic kind of racer. It doesn't feel like you're in Imola. It, and Melbourne didn't feel like Melbourne. But again, this is the Game Boy Advance. I'm sure the, the GameCube and the PC versions were a lot better in regards to the presentation and the, the track layouts and, and just the general presentation. And as you can see, I'm not very good at this. Look at that stand. Oh, there's another one. Those stands just out in a field, out in the open. Let's have a look at another track then. I would look at a different car at some point, maybe. Oh, look at those names there. Schumacher and Raikkonen. Fantastic drivers. So there's your multiplayer. We're in the waiting room. So if I just sat here all day, do you think anyone would join me? I don't think so. Because I don't think it's that kind of multiplayer, is it? Did it have a system link? Like a... Like we had with the original Game Boy, where you can link up to another Game Boy Advance and play against your friends, or your brothers, or your sisters. This is what Monaco looks like. <laughs> because this is one of the most recognisable tracks on the Formula 1 calendar, isn't it? Again, they've got the, the picturesque scenery in the backgrounds there. They've got that spot on. But this doesn't feel like Monaco. This just feels like, again, generic racing game outside somewhere <laughs> look at the buildings popping in it's like how dangerous would that be oh we got a palm tree oh we got palm trees oh there's a lamp post there you go i like what they've gone for with this it's a bit of arcadey fun it's very simplistic in design but i'm making it look like it's complicated it's it's not it's just fiddly as all hell to play. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the way the cars go on the corners. I actually quite like this, i got to say. This would have kept me busy on long car journeys when I was younger. I would have absolutely loved this, actually. Again, the, the engine sounds are so good. Ah, I cannot keep this thing on the track. Hey, there's my teammate, the other Renault there. I like the way the AI goes off and stuff as well. The AI isn't flawless like it can be in some F1 games where the AI does not make any errors. Oh. Boats just popping in there. I mean, I recognise these turns and these corners, but... To me, it feels like it's... <laughs> it feels like it's a track around the edge of Monaco, like literally by the boats, rather than where it is, well, where it actually is, if I've explained that well. I haven't explained that well at all. I'm currently in P21. <laughs> so I've got only one driver behind me who will probably take me over in a bit. It's ambitious, and I respect any game or any developer who's trying to... Yeah, trying to show some ambition with their games. I've got to say, every time I throw on the Game Boy Advance, or I fire up a Game Boy Advance game, I'm always blown away by the visuals. Like, uh, I don't remember them looking this good back in the day. I must say, I didn't own the Game Boy Advance. My brother did. Big shout out to Matt. And I, um, if I visited my parents, I would always, yeah jump on his Game Boy Advance, but like I say, our oh, Rubens Barrichello is a blast from the past. 
Uh, it was Rubens, was it Rubens? I'm sure it was Rubens Bar Barrichello. He's Brazilian, wasn't he? Anyway, my my F1 knowledge is okay. I wouldn't say I'm a, a fanatic. I enjoy the racing. I look forward to it on a Sunday. I watch the qualifying. Like I'll skip the practice sessions. I'm not that bothered about practice. Um, I am trying to change my driver here, guys, and I'm not entirely sure. So I just need to delete the profile and then go from the beginning. Let's just put in any old name. Here we go. It's a bit convoluted, isn't it? The long way round for doing that. Surely they could have just been like, yeah, don't tie me to a car. It's got to be Schumacher and the Ferrari. Okay, Indianapolis. Some of these tracks obviously are not used in the modern current day f1 calendar i don't know what the a1 ring is was that austria which is now known as the red bull ring maybe but uh, because yeah this was before the days of red bull racing wasn't it wasn't it jaguar became red bull when the cars are revving up there at the start line they sound like cats at night fighting <laughs> What I'll do at some point as well, towards the end of the video, is try a rain. Try a rain? Oh, it's all going off here. I'll try a race in the rain, I should say. I mean, it, this does feel slightly different. Using Schumacher now, the better driver and the better car. The best F1 driver of all time. Some say Senna. Not for me, Schumacher. Senna... From the little I remember seeing of him, because I am that old. Oh my god, it's... Oh, I just want to quit out. I want to get to a raining weather match. Match race. i got football on the mind. Oh, Olivier Panis. All the names. Um, Yeah, Senna. He, I mean, he was incredible. Incredible to watch. But he wasn't as good as Schumacher, in my opinion. There you go, guys. It's raining. I mean, we sadly lost Senna, of course. Way too young. Maybe if he had more years racing, we would have seen how he matured as a driver and won more titles. Because he would have won more titles. He was that good. Oh. There we go. I'm getting used to this. Ah. Oh. I'm better in the rain. Some drivers are better in the rain, aren't they? I always remember someone saying Carlos Sainz is really good in the rain. I think it was Carlos Sainz. Yeah, let me know if you've played this version, guys, of F1 2002. I think it's cool as hell. Oh. It's very arcadey. There's a bit of depth to it as well, though, to be fair. Oh, look at that, guys. I'm really slow, though. That's the only problem. I think once I get to grips... No pun intended. I promise I didn't intend that. But when I do get to grips with this... I think I'll spend a bit of time with this over the next few days. This is cool. Anyway, like I say, let me know if you've played this game. Look out for more content coming to the channel. I'll speak to you all soon.